when you get up in the morning, your mother should teach you to first or early after you get out to fix your bed. Fix your room and so on. That's exactly what the bees do. Once they put it in the cell, they go back in and they clean that cell. And that cell better be clean because we don't have an egg in there if it's not clean. She inspects the flowers. So it's just like a mother with a, a child. Fix your bed, bring your room out. That's the first duty they have. And after that, their glands develop. And then those glands, and everybody I think has heard of royal jelly. And this is a special um, solution that the bees, young bees, make in their glands. And they salivate that in the cell where the queen has laid an egg. Every bee gets royal jelly at the beginning. Drones, workers, queen. Only for a couple of days. The queen gets royal jelly all the time that she's alive. She's just immersed uh, in, in royal jelly. And the royal jelly makes you grow fast. She grows fast and she grows big. And, uh, and of course, she being the queen, she has a shorter, um, she matures from egg to, uh, she emerges from the pupa in 16 days. The workers, which are also females, they, uh, it takes 22 days. And for the drones, it takes 24 days. You know, we got another drone. We got that big job we got to do, but we're going to die when we do it. Okay? So, anyhow, it takes longer. And this is a problem with our mites, the the mites, because the drones have a longer life in the pupa stage. And the mites like that longer lifespan, so they go to the drones more and feed on them. So it's kind of a big problem when you get through, the, through that. Okay, you have the chart. Uh, didn't get that up here, but that's a question. Where do they go to die? Do they die in these eyes, or do they go outside? And die? As a rule, they, they die out away. What usually happens is their wings wear out. And you'll see them out there, and they'll be just breathing like the chickens, but they just can't take off. And that's usually what happens. But their wings drop? Their wings drop. Where? They become tattered, they become tattered and torn. Yeah. And you can see them come in and land, and you'll see chunks of the wings dragging. And eventually they go out, they fill up with nectar, and they don't have the wing power to make it back. So they fall in the grass, and the bird gets a treat. <laughs> but, but when they die in the hive, yeah. you'll see the bees dragging that dead one out. They're like a mortician. <laughs> There's every job that you find in, in all of the other questions. Do our bees' sizes vary in different states? Because, like in Arizona, the bees are a lot bigger than they are here. Say that again. Do bees vary in size? In Not a states? great deal, but they do vary in size. Yes. Arizona bees are a lot bigger than the bees. Yeah, uh, the workers are pretty, pretty close. You're talking uh, about honeybees? I don't get that close. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference in size of wasps and hornets and all those. Yeah. Well, this is just a, a regular bee, and when we swim by the pool, there's a whole nest of them, and they have a whole big, huge nest. Um, the worker bees are all the same size. Is that what you're asking? Well, this is here, because I've seen them here in this state. Were they in, they, were they in like an encased thing and not an hive? No, they were all open. It's like an open hive. Okay. You know, it's not like your hive you see in the trees. It's like a bush, and they're all open. Do they stay there all the time? Okay. Probably they are not hundreds. Okay. Probably they are not Probably they are not, uh, because unless of the Africanized bees, they don't stay in the bush or someplace very long. They want to be in a hole in the tree or a hole in the cactus or a box or something like that. Well, they've been having so much trouble with the cats of bees. Okay. Swarms of bees. Yeah, the mutants have got attacked because the hops have the uh, Africanized bees. And of course, in Arizona, you do have that. I'm sure about the middle of Arizona, the middle of Texas, and New Mexico, and, and I think they're over in Florida now. And, uh, well, 
But uh, Bob, Bob can tell you more about uh, Africanized babies than I can. <laughs> well, uh, I, I just happen to say, it's a long story, and I want to uh, tell you about the us, us. My wife and I spent two, uh, two weeks in uh, Nicaragua in the uh, first part of February four years ago, and we dealt uh, with all their bees are Africanized. Uh, we, we visited well over a hundred different beekeepers, and we were out in the field. It was interesting, and that's a whole lot I want to talk about that. But uh, the Africanized bees are not, they have them in hives just like we do, and um, they use a lot more smoke. They are more aggressive. Uh, uh, we dressed accordingly, although some of those people worked uh, a couple of cases. The men worked with uh, uh, without gloves. Uh, <coughs> interesting story, but uh, my wife did a lot of photography work, and she's the only one that got stung. <laughs> uh, but uh, they. Uh, and I think you're, you're asking about these bees that are in clusters. Uh, that may be a swarm that we're talking about, where two queens are produced, or a queen, another queen, and they leave the hive. I'm sure some of you have seen those hanging on trees. <coughs> Even the Africanized bees look for some kind of shelter. Now in uh, Thailand or uh, Asia, some places, there are bees that in a tropic type situation, there are bees there that do <coughs> hang in trees and they build their comb there and everything. Uh, uh, the types of bees here, the regular uh, bees that we use, would not, uh, would, would not, if they did that, then they might. With bees, you never know. Yeah. Uh, but if they knew, they would not survive our winter. I, I wasn't trying to be smart when I this. But Bob says that in Nicaragua, they use a smoker. When I hold my hand like that, the smoker is just much bigger, longer, and bigger in diameter. <laughs> so they smoke me. Uh, they really smoke me. What is the smoke for? Pardon? What is the smoke for? The smoke is to set uh, on the to confuse them and to settle them down so that uh, uh, I don't know uh, Oscar was off this morning with our pinky bean class and I was at another place to explain the class and I don't know he marked the queen and they looked for eggs larvae and everything did you use any smoke? yeah but they uh, the smoke went out which is normal and they were very calm uh, when it was cloudy they're not very calm. The sky opened up and it was just nice and calm. We all did. And I, I, I told the people don't stand in front of the hive. They stood in front of the hive, but the, nobody got stung or anything like that. Although they had to be out there. I, I, uh, I let mine to start out with it and it went out. I never used it. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and we, uh, well, we didn't actually, uh, he marked the queen. Uh, I marked some drones and just just people a chance to do that. Uh, I think that I'm not sure that the question uh, was about uh, the, the different uh, levels that the worker bees do. Either you have the nurse bees. Yeah, we, we, that's on the, the, top, the right hand side of that chart shows the careers of the worker bee. Yeah. The first three weeks. They have duties inside the hive. And when they're about three weeks old, that's when they start going out to the flowers to gather nectar and pollen. And then, so then there are guard bees, and there are different levels. Uh, the, the, kind of the buzzword now it is a superorganism, uh, where they treat a colony of bees as an individual. Uh, uh, and just think of that, of that total thing right here. One individual. That's not a whole bunch of people. 
It's just your body, you know, what your brain does, or what your heart does. But if you take your hand and go like that, how much does that take off of my life? A bunch of scales and so on. You do that with a beehive, smash a field like that, tell them how, how much shorter do you, uh, you know, shrink the life of those. You didn't. Because it's a super organism. Yes, okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, so you mentioned, like, don't stand in front of the beehive. Is this, like, don't they go a certain direction, right? Like, when you place them, you have to place them correctly? You do that. You, you place them uh, like that, uh, either east or south, so that they get the sunshine early. Okay. But now, as far as standing in front of the hive, I don't really suggest that you get inside the bushes and stand this mm -hmm. far away from that tube. Oh, well, right. You're in you know, <laughs> well, we were, we were here for a whole week. Um, the kindergarten class was here for a whole week the first when this was first put in. Yeah. And um, the first day we said that we should maybe walk on the other side of the path, but after that we really didn't. Yeah. And we, we didn't have any problems, did we, Carly? But usually in the hive you don't no. stand in front of the hive, you don't right. work from the in yeah. front of the hive. Yeah. Because you're in their path. Mm -hmm. so it's just like a mad ball. You don't right. step in front of it. <laughs> Okay, now she had the question on the smoker, and I don't think she got the full answer. The reason for the smoker is you smoke the bees. They think there might be, theoretically, they think there might be going to be a fire, and they may have to leave. So they eat. They eat honey. Then they become docile. It's just like we do when we have a big meal on Sunday or Thanksgiving. We become couch potatoes. Okay. So the smoke calms them down, not only from the smoke, but they have a tendency to, to eat honey. And it, it, it's harder for them to bend the abdom uh, their abdomen to sting you. Uh, just side issue, totally. Uh, how many of how many of you have been bitten by a bee? No. no. Never. If you don't learn anything today, you don't learn anything today, you have been stung by a bee, and you have been bitten by a mosquito. The mosquito is a female, I always like this, the female, it's a female mosquito that bites you. Uh, the, the mosquito males are vegetarian. So, uh, they have to have blood, uh, yours, sometimes. Uh, uh, to produce eggs. Uh, you have been stung by a bee and it's the other end. And, it, it, and if they can't bend that endowment because they've eaten, uh, <coughs> but they can, but, uh, then they'll drive that stinger in because you're warm blooded then you swell up around it and they lose their stinger. Uh, and then the bee will die, not immediately, but soon. So, the, the part of that about the stinger, and that uh, stinger stays in you. This is the question we and all of us, when somebody that says, uh, I was stung by a honeybee, and you say, okay, how'd you get the stinger out? Well, I didn't have to take the stinger out. You say, you weren't stung by a honeybee. You were stung by a wasp. Honeybee stinger is barbed, and it's too pronged. And it'll work its way in you. And it has two little pouches, and you can actually see them once that tears out of the, uh, the worker's abdomen. You can actually see those little pouches working even after that bee is gone and dead. It'll be going like this. So now you go like this to pull it out. You just did the same thing as a doctor would into a syringe. You push more in. You take your fingernail or a credit card or Night and just break the ball. You don't grab it, pull it up. Because you put more into you when you grab it and pull it up. Correct? But my grandmother, years ago, was out in the garden pulling, and I had bees out in the garden. Uh, that, that was a long, long time ago. But she got stung on her nose. <laughs> she put down her hole and walked into the house and got a knife to scrape that stinger off, so that's a little side story. <laughs> <laughs> yep, question back there.
what causes bees to swarm? You know, every once in a while you hear about them taking off and somebody has to go. This goes back to the, the, the queen and queen cells, if I understood your question right. And, and several things may be a factor. One of them may be that, that, they, uh, that they produce so many bees that it's crowded. And so then they will decide, the workers will decide probably to produce a new queen, and this is this, uh, this superorganism again, and so then the old queen then will, because the two queens can't live together, so the old queen will take a lot of the old workers and leave, and that's the swarm. And that usually is temporary close to where they left the hive. And if you want something exciting, you go out to a beehive when it's in the process of swarming. And all these bees will be circling around. You know, probably, well, some, some swarms may be four or five pounds. And that would be like uh, close to 20,000 bees all flying around <coughs> until, uh, until they decide to light someplace temporarily most times. Uh, and you hope then that you can collect that swarm, especially if it's a big one. And, uh, and you do that by, um, uh, by having an empty hive, and you take, hopefully it's on a branch. Uh, I've done it when it's been up in the tree 15 feet. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and then you just take them and you, you can put them in a, you can shake them off to some place you can get them, brush them off into a pail, like a, like a plastic five gallon pail. And then you take them and you uh, 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 dump them down on the ground in front of the hive. And if the queen will go in, then you have a new colony. But uh, back to your question, uh, it, it's a case, one of the factors is probably uh, it is overcrowding. Uh, there may be other things uh, that can cause that process to occur, and it's a it's a way of, of perpetuating the species. The one thing that keeps hive going in just one queen is the queen gives off an odor that we call a pheromone, and they have isolated this pheromone. We give off pheromones to a pheromone is a chemical that's given off by one organism of the species and it affects another. The sex hormone is that hormone. But uh, with the queen bee, she has this pheromone that it affects the workers. And the way that the workers get that pheromone is one of the part of the life cycles, the worker bees are always licking the queen. The queen doesn't go to the bathroom, she doesn't feed herself, nothing. She's an egg-laying machine, that's all she does. So they're licking her all the time. That chemical is goes all through the hive. All workers have that, and so their ovaries do not develop. So that so long as that pheromone is strong, you don't have another queen. So somewhere along the line, that pheromone is reduced. Then the workers realize that there's something going on. So they'll select and uh, a larva, one to two days old, enlarge the cell, and feed it royal jelly. That's when the queen then feeds. And as Roger, um, we were working with the hive, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, there were at least 15 queen cells in that one hive. And we took out five or six. That's unusual. Yes. Well, I've had it as many birds. Yeah. I'm sad to wreck it. <laughs> 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 